Good morning, Anna. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, on this uh, Sunday morning of June the 11th. So I wanted to do a little video on our um, garden that we have going, um, working towards self-sustainable gardening, and um, what it looks like to grow fruits and veg when you don't have a lot of space. So this is our upper ravine here. As you can see, there's a lot of trees on our property, really big, older trees that cover a lot of, um, it, it creates much too much shade. So even though we have like 350 feet worth of land, a lot of it is not usable for a couple of reasons. One being that, um, the trees above give too much shade and a lot of these trees are black walnut and the roots are very toxic so vertical uh, gardening is a great alternative to just growing something in a flat field so just up on the upper hill here we've got um, i've got different herbs that's marjoram basil I'm still trying to figure out where I've gone wrong here. This is a learning process for me as well. I've got, I think, parsley here and cilantro here. My lavender's doing beautifully. That's probably the only herb that's going to have done well. Over here, I've got um, potato towers. So again, instead of having a flat land of um, potato, like a potato field, if you are in a limited space, you can do potato towers potato stacking. There's different ways of referring to it. This is the first one that was built. This one's not so fancy. This was just done with upcycled uh, wood. Uh, the only thing that you need to be careful of is not to use any uh, pressure treated wood of any kind to make these towers. They, they don't have to be fancy. They don't have to be pretty. But this was the first one that was started and you just kind of put some composting material and then you put some soil and then you put um, wood chips on top of it to cover everything and I'm actually due to hey dog due to cover this up um, this this one here needs to I have to recover everything up until everything's covered up again and then as it keeps growing through and up you, you cut it's, that's actually a little bit higher than it should be so I'm going to cover it all up again and, and then it's going to grow up again and once it reaches the top of this board here I'm going to put a second uh, bit of plywood this one was I just planted this on Friday so this will not have popped through yet these are Yukon Golds over here and these are just basic white potatoes that um, I got at a health food store so the ones that you get at a store, if you notice how they don't tend to rot very well. If it doesn't rot or sprout, do without is the motto that I try to go with. In here I've got some green pepper that I don't know if it's going to come up or not, but that's the last thing I'm kind of waiting on. This is all going to be done in small quantities because, again, this is a learning experience for me on um, the vertical stacking and putting things in small spaces. This is cabbages. I've got another couple of seeds in there to see if there's a maximum of six to go in there. These are two that I'm preparing to plant probably some carrots and beets I'm going to go for in there. Um, some more herbs that I've got going in these here. These are peas. The vertical stacking is going to come in here now. So I've got a row of peas that are right here. Once the peas get to a point where you, know, you can see some of them are standing up, that I can kind of um, tape, not tape, but wire them to the frame. This is an old garage where the, oh, that sounds bright, um, the garage um, canvas tore apart so I can upcycle the uh, framework. So I'm going to have the piece start at the bottom. I'm going to grow upwards and then I'll be able to do harvesting a lot of peas in a very small space. So that's what's going on up here. So I have my, this is my bucket that I am going to now have to take back down to the creek. Let's have a, take a little walk. 
haha <laughs> swing set for Colleen. She really loves being out here. This is our chicken coop. Yvonne? Yvonne? I have one chicken right now who's very old. She should not be laying eggs anymore, but she still gives me some. Yvonne? She still gives me an egg on occasion. Okay, she doesn't want to make an appearance right now. Fine. Oh, I can hear you in there, honey. You gonna come out? Got a whiny dog. Ha ha. Okay, so this is what it means to have the inability to grow anything on a flat land. First of all, we have a hill going on here. And look at that. I mean, it's like 8.30 in the morning. It's going to be super, super hot today. So I have to water everything very quickly. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've got... I, I don't even know why what the stone wall was, but um, I've got asparagus I've planted in here. This is a gooseberry bush right here. This is something my grandmother had many years ago. And I bought from the Mennonites gooseberry jam. And it was really tasty, so I'm looking forward to those. The goal for us is still to be moving away from here uh, within the next year. And if that's the case, I can still transplant. We're kind of setting things up that we can still uproot everything as needed. This is a retired chicken coop here. This was a summer pen but it's kind of overgrown and I don't like the chickens so far from the house because beyond our creek we have um, coyotes. So this is a an apple tree, a uh, black cherry and then over here we have another apple tree so if, and again, the wood chipping helps to, I've already watered them, helps to retain the water. So we do get some space down here in the ravine where there is some sun that's like a full sun all day long. But most of the time we have all this, this shade. I'm looking directly upwards. That, that just, And this is a black walnut tree here. So I don't know how far out here the root system goes, but... I can't grow very many things anywhere close to, so I would have to probably clear out about 15 trees, and it's not just about cutting them down, I'd have to get the root system, the, um, oh my, the stumps removed, and then I'd have to lime the soil to neutralize it, neutralize the pH balance. That's how bad walnut trees are. I mean, the, the walnut itself is great for gun stalks, um, hammers, um, that sort of thing, but really not great for growing anything around so <clears throat> over here Ooh, ah, I just fell in a hole ha ha all right there's a creek down here you can hear the running water it's nice to sit by here when there's not too many mosquitoes out this is actually a drainage creek that goes down into Lake Erie so I'm going to drop my bucket down through those leaves and grab myself another bucket's worth to make sure that everything has had a good watering before the sun really starts to scorch everything. Hold on, be right back. So I had the wrong spot. I was standing over there. This is actually where I pitched my bucket down into the, uh, the water there. So here's my bucket here and uh, rather than having chlorine, I used the um, the hose at the back of the house then they would be our plants would all be getting fed some lovely chlorine fluoride and other toxins so um, this is much safer for them so I'm going to go way back up the hill there and finish watering everything and hopefully they'll have uh, had a good drink before it's supposed to be uh, 35 degrees Celsius today so that's really really hot so Hopefully this uh, water will sustain them through the afternoon. Okay, so everything's had a good, good dousing of water. Never water your veg in the uh, afternoon when it's scorching hot because you will literally cook your plants <laughs> right where they stand. So everything's uh, been well watered now. And... Uh, Hopefully that'll be enough to get them through. I'll come back after the evening news tonight to um, feed them again. 
good dosing of water. So the yeah, like if uh, like I say, the the peas here they're going to be uh, grown vertically instead of uh, across a field. This is my green pepper here. If if they happen to grow tall enough, they're going to go on the other side over here and uh, in a in a row, and then they'll grow up on the other side. And I'll just kind of decide what I'm going to do with those other two sections there. I have to do a little more research on my herbs and see why they are not doing terribly well. I think I probably put the seeds too close together. I would love to, like, right, right in the middle here, have a, um, an herb garden where it's a big circle and then a, a wooden circle in the center and maybe one on top. And I would have loved to have had that so I could put my lavender plant, like, right at the top. And, uh, you know, basically I walk out the back door, I come and get some herbs for cooking, it's right there. And that's how old houses in Tudor times and Stuart times, they would do it. The, the herb garden was like right by the kitchens so that they could have easy access for fresh herbs. So that's, uh, that's our little homesteading gardening. I really like to watch, um, and I'm subscribed to Off Grid with, with uh, Doug and Stacy. They put up pretty much daily little snippets of their lives. They live in a house that's completely without electric or solar. Um, no water comes to their home. They pay a fraction of the property taxes that they did when they lived in their 5,000 square foot house. They sold everything off. They moved. Uh, to 11 acres worth of land. Doug built himself and his wife a, an 800 square foot cabin and they do really well there so I highly uh, recommend their YouTube channel. They've got a lot of subscribers so there's obviously a lot of us who are interested in learning how to live off grid. The more that you can grow for yourself. The food prices in the stores are continually rising. Wages not so much so into our chicken coop over there. We've got uh, on Tuesday three chicks coming, which will add to, again, this property is quite small, so hopefully we'll have more land that's usable land. And, you know, maybe I, I don't mind having neighbors, but I mind that they're so very close. So if we can have some open land, then I can free range the chickens throughout the day and bring them in at night. But here it's just, uh, there's a lot that doesn't work for us here, so. We're making do with what we've got going right now. So there we go. Anna, you want to say hi? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Ball? Good girl. Having fun? We're going to have to bring you in for the afternoon. I'm not leaving your black furriness out in the uh, scorching sun when it hits. So aren't you a beautiful girl? Up there on the barbecue is uh, our barn cat, our ginger cat, who is missing at the moment. I guess this is where Colleen, when it's not too bad a day out, she'll play outside and we spend hours outside. So you see over there too, there's like these, the white, uh, oh my gosh, I can't, is that a trellis as well? And then there's lattice work there. You can use anything to do vertical growing. So those will probably uh, be put into use here. Or they'll be, if, if we get a chance to leave here, they're definitely coming with us. There's just so many things that can be used for vertical growing when you don't have a lot of growing space. So goodbye, Anna. Can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye? Good girl. All right, signing off. Catch you on the next video.